Welcome, welcome, welcome to the extraordinary live stream event. So Keith says, I like my pencil drawings and sketches, but when I ink them, they look bad. Is it just practice to get better or is there a knack to it? I feel like that's how my art was. That's how I felt for the longest time with my comics. I would pencil them great and then the inks would be horrible or it just wouldn't impress me as much as my pencils would or it wouldn't impress other people. <clears throat> and what I decided, what I started doing was just using my pencils. I, I, just, I just said, forget inking. Um, I might as well use my pencils as the inks. And the thing about Photoshop is it allows you to do things like that, like crush the values with levels. If you open up the levels panel, you can adjust all of that stuff, like so that your pencils kind of look like inks. If you've ever seen uh, my book Remind, if you go to remindblog.com, you can see it all online. Um, that's all pencils for the most part, except for some several pages of the second volume. But everything was pencil because I just was more confident in my pencils. And I liked how they looked. So I I think you should just stick with your pencils. If that's your strength, then why, why try to hammer your weakness into a strength when you have a strength already, right? And so in doing that with Remind, um, it was real enjoyable and then people loved it and they said wow your inks are amazing and I was like well they're not inks you know but people didn't don't care you know as long as it looks good as long as that product in product looks good and then I started uh, experimenting with inking after hanging out with Doug Tenaple a little bit and he showed me the Pintel brush pen and he let me he kind of gave me a little like little tips on it how to use it and how to think about it and then I started messing around with it and I got I got one started using it a little bit and then I was just like hooked on it and I wanted to do it for my next book and so that's why Sithra is all with the Pinto brush pen I actually ink it instead of pencil but you know I might I might uh, do something different next time I might go back to pencils next time or you know something else just depends on what's fun at the, at the moment. So that's that's what I gotta say. Use those pencils, don't worry about inks. Just pencil, pencil. That's what you're good at, and that's what you like, how they look, then just do pencils. And if you go to remindblog.com, there's a little tutorial I made on adjusting your pencils so that they look like inks, you know? I don't know if that will help you. Okay, well, what I, what Doug Tenable told me when he convinced me to use the brush pen is, oh, so you were convinced too? yeah, oh yeah, is you imagine the tip of the brush, and this probably goes for any brush, imagine the tip of the brush is the tip of a pencil, and you're not trying to push it through your paper. Like, usually when people try to use a brush pen, they push down and they try to control that that weight exactly but instead of doing that you just try to touch the tip on the paper and then just draw it as if you're not trying to push it through the paper and then let the brush do all let the brush have all the nuances in your line and then you just let the brush do its thing and so you're not trying to push it you're just trying to touch the tip of the brush to the paper and that's it I don't know. That really helped me because before that I was trying to like control everything with the brush and it just wouldn't work. But um, now I just try to draw, draw it as lightly as I can. Except for if like it's if I want it to be a real big fat line I might go over it and push it a little harder. But that's what I think. Is, is that a question 
about if a Cintiq will improve your skill. Um, I don't think it will improve your skill. I think just doing art will improve your skill, but Cintiqs are an amazing tool that, you know, really help you do things faster. But, you know, it's a lot of money to spend for a pencil, basically. You know, like, I think you, I think learning to just draw anything with a pencil is kind of, is kind of the, the, the place to focus. And then once you can get really good with a pencil, and any, any kind of pencil and paper, if you can make that look good, then, it, then definitely buy the tools, you know, buy any kind of tools. And, um, when I first got hired to do storyboards, I would, I would literally show up with a sketchbook and sometimes I wouldn't even have a sketchbook. I'd have number two pencils and a pencil sharpener. And um, a lot of times I would just ask the directors for copy paper. And, but a lot of times I'd use a sketch paper, sketch pad. And um, I met a lot of other um, storyboard artists during that time because I did it for like six years in LA. And a lot of them would bring a whole arsenal of stuff, like backpacks full of all this equipment. And um, they would always be weirded out that I just had had uh, a little tiny, a, a sketchbook, a number two, some number two pencils, and uh, an eraser, and maybe a ruler so I could draw the, li the lines for the borders. They were just always weirded out by it, but to me, it, it, um, I don't know, I always just, and it seems to me like when I would talk to directors about it, they'd be like, yeah, I mean, if you if you can draw anything, if you can just draw with a pencil, you'll always have work. If you can draw whatever people tell you to draw with a pencil, because you'll never, you'll never have to like, oh, I'm sorry, I need to bring my Cintiq, you know, my $2,000 Cintiq, I need to figure out how to get it here so I can draw this for you. You know, it's like, it really kind of becomes a limitation if you have to have these really expensive tools so i always encourage people to just get good at drawing with a pencil and once you once you start master feeling like really confident in that you can walk into a place and whip up something with a pencil and a piece of paper then uh you're able to take advantage of these more expensive tools a lot easier you know at least that's my my perspective on it it's a very, yeah, you're right, it's a very good tool, this Cintiq. And I, I'm to the point now to where I'm churning out so much stuff that it's it's really helped speed it up. But if I wouldn't have had, um, like, well, like Remind was all done without a Cintiq. It was with tracing paper. Like the, the I'm sorry, the stages where I would convert my thumbnails to more cleaner pieces of art was all on tracing paper. And I have, you know, scan it and then blow it up then trace over it on tracing paper then rescan that and then i would um blow that blow up the panels print it out and i'd use a light table to to pencil it and i'd do do the inks with pencil and <clears throat> and then i'd scan it and do the colors in photoshop and um i didn't really have i had a wacom tablet for a lot of that and then uh, towards the end i bought a or for the second book, I bought a little tiny Cintiq, a used one, and used that. And um, that was when I started working at DreamWorks too. So they had a big Cintiq for me at DreamWorks. And it kind of forced me to learn it better. And now that I've learned it, I'm like, okay, yeah, it, it speeds up these processes that I really needed to speed up, you know. But again, it's like, if I couldn't draw, then the Cintiq is kind of just like, this big fancy thing that helps me look a little better <laughs> you know anyway it's like when someone like gets Photoshop and they don't they don't want to put in the time to draw but they want to use Photoshop to make it look like they're good at drawing then they ended up end up having a, a comic or art with a lot of filters and and stuff and it just it looks it's just really obvious that it's not the this the, the Time hasn't been put in to develop the, the skill yet, you know? All right, 
See you. See you guys. <laughs> Thanks for watching again. And I'll see you next time. Hi guys, if you like this artwork, it comes out in a book called Sithra the Deep. And it comes out on February 1st. It's in pre-order sales right now. It's 176 pages of full color awesomeness. It was originally published on Webtoons, but now you can get it in hardcover book form. You can pre-order it now on IndieBound, Barnes & Nobles, Amazon, and for Canada, you can go to Indigo.